Hello, it's Casper again. Welcome to another Braco tutorial. Uh, as I speak right now, the video that I just made, which is about the installing of Braco via Web Matrix, is being uploaded right now. So, uh, going straight for the next one. In this one, I thought I'd cover a more uh, a, a subject probably a lot of people are thinking about, and that is uh, multilingual content, also known as having more languages on your website. That is a, a very nice thing that a lot of users would like, or a lot of web ag agencies, and for this Umbraco is uh, also very good uh, in a lot of ways. To be honest, and I'd like to share my, uh, my my concerns here, the only way I've seen Umbraco fail, and I've felt that hard, was with uh, commerce, you know, like uh, webs you know, um, web shops. Uh, it doesn't fail, but it fails if your client, let's say you're a small uh, firm like the one I work in at the moment, is uh, very small and uh, the clients you have aren't multi-millionaires or anything like that, they're not going to want to pay, for example at the moment, you, uh, I think yeah, e-commerce, they cost 4,000 euros a, uh, a year. There are not many people that, uh, you know, small companies that want to pay for that. So uh, it, that it, at the moment is a bit lacking if you want, you know, uh, many uh, you know, products with variants and uh, stuff like that, and uh, also that you want an interface, and that's where we had many problems when I made this. Was um, well, when I made a web shop once in Umbraco was that the u the the end user who uh, who was to a am administrate all the stuff in the back end had to have many sub nodes all the time. So there was a node, and then there was a sub node and a top node, sub node, sub node, sub node, and that's. Just and that's just way too much clicking around for any user. They sh they don't want to do that, so then they'd rather go with something like WordPress and WooCommerce, which is also free. And a lot of there's, let's face it, there's a, a shit ton of load of uh, WordPress uh, programmers, so to speak, out there as compa compared to ASP.NET. But we all know what's best, don't we? That's why we're here. So let's get started. That was just a, a quick uh, thing that I've happened to me. Let's open up on Braco. Let's just now my Visual Studio is having a little bit of a loading thing here. There we go. Okay, so let's open up our uh, test application. I think this is the one we used. Why oh, there's the Umbraco tester? I've had uh, loads of projects. Let's just see, was this the one? There we go, this was the one. Okay, so so far we have a, a yeah, something that doesn't look very good to be honest. Uh, but you've probably styled it better than I have. I'll probably do a tutorial on, on styling this at some point. But we'll we'll cover that later. Okay, so let's log into our back in a minute. Uh, there we go, and slash and braco. So what we want first is, uh, we want to, here we have a home page and all our stuff here. Let's just say now that the site is complete. We've, we've done the whole site, and this is what it's going to be. Now we need to make the, uh, multiple languages. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our settings, and we're going to go to languages. And right now we have two. We have United Kingdom and Danish for Denmark. That's where I live. Um, so yeah, that, that's all uh, perfect. We need these two languages, so we're going to go back here, and then we're going to right-click on this node and go to cultures and host names. And right here it just says inherit, but we want to go to ENGB for English or Great Britain and save it. Now the site knows that this is the one. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to right click and then we're going to say um, copy. And then we're just going to copy under the content node. There we go. Press copy. And now we have a complete copy of the entire structure of what we had before. So we can start translating now. So that instead of home page, then we can call this YIMP. Which means home in Danish. Put in there, and then in Braco uh, test, uh, and uh, yeah, stuff like that. And then uh, this is a test text I just wrote. Stuff like that, and we can save and publish. And uh, yep, and that's, that looks pretty good. Now the only thing is, right? If we go in here, it says yep, and here it says well, nothing. So at the moment, if we would like to go to the Danish site, we'd have to write YIMP, and that's, yeah, that doesn't look good either. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're just going to go back a minute, then we're going to go into here, and we're now going to go into Visual Studio, 
we're going to go to the um, I think it's the Embraco settings.config but I could be wrong, let me just check uh, user logged in nope it's not here, it's the web.config and here we're going to search for hide and then this one Umbraco high top level node f for node from path. This we want to set to false. There we go. And now we're going to switch this a bit around. So now if we reload our site, we'll see now that the home in properties is still called YIMP as you see, and then the home page is now called home page. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rename this. So this one we'll call um, EN for English. Just save that. The page title can still be home, that doesn't matter. And then this one will be, instead of YEMP, it'll be DK. Save that. And now, if we reload, um, yeah, okay, this one's called EN, but we could uh, we could definitely change that so that instead of the name, we'll just write the, the title here. Um, there we go. So that's good. And uh, yeah, okay. If we reload, we get into that. We could also write slash en, and we'd also get to the home page as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And if we try and go to dk, we'll get an error. I see search results. Uh, where dog type search results. Okay. See, the problem about this is uh, it's trying to find the search page, which it can't find because all the content here is not published. So we right click, and then we say uh, publish. Where is it? There we go. If you want this, otherwise you can publish each one uh, at a, at a, by itself. But then we'll publish all the sub nodes. There we go. Close it. And I think if we reload, they should all be published. There we go. So now if we reload, there we go. And we get the Danish text. Pretty good, eh? Uh, of course, right now everything's still in English, so it's not going to look pretty uh, that good either. But of course, you know uh, how to do this. Should not be a problem. Right, the next thing we want to do is we want to have a look at something called a dictionary. Because here, so right now, you know, that's if we could easily uh, translate all this stuff, we could translate the E, you know, um, uh, yeah, the search results, all the pages, but what if we want to, something like a placeholder, for example, right now it says search, but in Danish it's called suit. Yeah, I know Danish is a weird language, but whatever. Um, all this stuff we might, we might want to change it, and uh, also the, um, contact page, maybe we want to say, you know, uh, the Danish for name, and the Danish for message, and the Danish for submit. So let's go and um, make it so we can do that, and this is really easy. My cat wants attention apparently. Okay, new dictionary item, and first we want to find out for what, so let's do it for the search placeholder, so we'll just write search placeholder, you can have spaces if you want, just press create. Now we pull, we'll be put into here, and in here we'll just write uh, search, and in danger right to soup. We'll save it. And then now we'll just take this, there we go, go into our Umbraco installation, just close that, and then go to our master page. There we go. Oh, that's the home master. Ah, it's in navigation, of course. And then we have the placeholder. So we're going to remove that. And then we're going to write uh, at umbraco dot um, field open close and then the um, and the thing is right here we want to do the double quotes but if you know a bit about pro programming then this is bad practice so here we're going to do single quotes otherwise there will be like double quotes inside double quotes and that's never a good idea in .NET or PHP so if you're going to have double quotes inside double quotes either what you do is sometimes you can do the backward slash method you can see that uh, that destroys it completely then I think we could actually have them, if I remember correctly. Or was it slightly weak? No, I think I think it's like this. Oh, sorry. Although it is giving me a bit of a fit. Don't think that's allowed actually. Nah. Anyway, uh, the other method is just a lot easier, but it should be possible. There we go. And then in here we will put. Instead of just the, the this, we're going to do a hashtag in front and then search placeholder, just as it is like this. And now, when we go back to our page, there, we'll go to home to the DK node. And see there it says uh, search, and we go back to the English. It also says search, and the reason for that is, if we go back, close it, 
then here on DK we want to right click and say cultures and host names and set that to Danish otherwise it won't understand that this is the Danish language and the reason why, and you'll see now it, now it should work, so let's go back to DK and now it says soup and the reason why it worked before, but, uh, you might ask, well why does this say it's a body text and this said the, uh, the Danish version of it even though I hadn't changed it that is because one, the, the dictionary requires that you set the culture and host names whereas this um, is derived from what you actually write inside these things here so that's, uh, yeah, that would be why. Um, yeah, let me just chop, sorry, contact information. Um, yep, okie dokie. Okay, all good. There we go, nice to know. Uh, just got changes. Okay, so all all that was left for me to do now in reality was to just change the uh, um, what are, what's it called the uh, the language, right? And uh, I'm going to do a couple more of expansions as I told you, uh, because right now it doesn't look good here on the home page. There it says DK and EN, so we want to change that. So let's go to our uh, home page first and instead of the name we're going to take the um, that's why we have the page title so now that that can be home I'll be using that instead um, so what did I call that my document type I think I actually put it here page title there we go that's the alias so I'd definitely like to use that instead if not you can do a completely new field for that if you want and now if we reload it says the yeah, instead and we would probably like to do that as well inside our um, let me just see a minute it's the navigation so here instead of the uh, item dot name we want to do item dot page title because it's the uh, top level node we'll be displaying and what did I change there um, Ah, there we go, I did it in the wrong one here, I want to do uh, homepage dot page title. And why doesn't that work? <sighs> I think, to be honest, it is because if we go back here, inside the English we have both of these set. Inside Danish, no we do. Very, very weird. Backer core model type which content does not contain a definition for page title. Why would that be? Ah, I think I know why. Yeah, that's because we're using model dot content. So of course, before uh, we could we could use dot name because that's a pr uh, property. But here we need to use get uh, property value um, page title. Oh, okay. And reload. There we go. Now it says. Yep. And now there's only one thing remaining, and that would be to make a. Uh, and yeah, it's fine. It says en or uh, dk there. And the next last thing we want to do is, if you ask me, it's nice to have a language switcher, and uh, that is actually very easy to create on your own. But there are two things we want to do. First, we want to go to the home page, and we want to do a. Um, let's do a language tab. Language. And then here we want to put in the uh, we we could put an, uh, a name field, but let's not. Let's just put a uh, an image field here, or f f let's call it a flag, a Im image flag. Why not? Why not? And then we want to do the media picker, definitely, and we want to put that in language. Just uh, space this out a bit. So image flag. There we go. Let's save it. And now, if we go back, we have, of course, inside our language, we have an image flag. So, that's cool. But let's do a whole new place here inside our, uh, um, what's it called? Um, 
uh, our navigation. So there is uh, all that going on, right? But let's go up now and create a new freeze loop. So at for each, then we'll do variable um, languages or language in then we'll just say languages. That's not been made yet, so we'll have to make it. Go. Okay. So if we're going to make languages, uh, variable languages, we're going to make that equal to model dot content um, dot um, ancestors or self. So we're going to take all the ancestors and put them into languages, all the top level nodes. Uh, just put the number one in there, just to be certain, so it always knows to take the uh, top level nodes, and we're going to pop that into languages, and then we're going to echo out, uh, echo, what am I talking about, pull out uh, each uh, language. So here, we want to do, the way we could do it actually, um, yep, here, from here we're just going to do um, language, no, uh, variable image, because it can is equal to language. Oh, there we go. Language dot get property value. We want to get the image flag. Oh, sorry, I wrote image. We want the image ID, and then variable image is equal to umbraco dot media. I want the image ID. We've done this a thousand times, or hopefully you have. I definitely have, I can remember this, so, and then we want to do an image tag. Why won't it let me do that? No, oh, weird. Weird, weird, weird. There we go. So, image source, and then it's an alt, I think it is called. There we go. Right, we have those two. So, we'll, from here, we'll do at image.url, and in the alt here, we want to do, uh, let's just do image dot name. Just just better ha better to have something in there than nothing. Uh, and the best thing here, right, is we want to go in and say uh, if what's it called um, if language dot has property image flag then go ahead and do all this because if we don't do this why is this okay good if we don't do this and leave the the language here empty, we could also, of course, go into a document type and just say, no, this is not allowed to be empty for the user. But uh, if you somehow f do that, or they get access to it and they s and they play with around with it, then if we don't set this and they try to load the site, it will completely die, like here. Um, I must be either string or an integer. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, here, I think it's a good idea to do like this, if I remember correctly. Let's try again. No. Okay. Oh, then I think it's just Doctor String here. I never usually have any problems with this. Uh, languages, languages, I get probably value. Anyway, let's just try and load something in a minute. Oh, there we go. Uh, do we have any? Yeah, let's just try that. For example, that's for the English node, and that is for the Danish node as well. So you won't be able to see much, but uh, no matter. Well, let's try and reload. Okay, now, now there's a thing here. So yeah, there we go. Don't know where is this going to put us. Of course, there's no link around it. That is one more thing we need to remember. So here, a hyperreference, a shadow, a. What the hell is wrong with my uh, IntelliSense? There we go. Just got to cheese it a bit. Then it will give up. Apparently, very weird. Hyperreference. It knows where I'm at. And then we want the uh, language language dot URL. 
There we go. And here, inside here, we could do at language dot get property value and no, sorry, no, we're not going to put anything in there. So I'm a bit tired at the moment. It's very late. And slash a go. Right, so we'll just reload that a minute. Now you can see we have a link, and it's that's going to take us back to the English. And for some reason, it's not showing me any more than one. Why is that? Hmm, maybe this isn't, isn't this? Uh, yes, it is published. Let me just do something here. Shouldn't do it like this, but uh, never mind. So height, 50 pixels, and width. 50 pixels. There we go, so there's one here, and that's the only one there is at the moment. Um, just out of curiosity, where would this put us? Okay, that's an E, and if we go to DK a minute, where would that put us? Okay, that's a DK. So why is that? Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's not use this line anyway, so we'll do uh, umbraco dot the uh, type content at root like that I think it's better to use that, there we go okay so I don't know why ancestors or self only took the first one but uh, anyway now we have the both so we have English and we have Danish so now we have a language switcher pretty cool eh? Um, yeah, I actually think that covers everything in this video. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please post them in the comments and I'll uh, try and answer them as well as I can. And if you have any ideas for future Umbraco tutorials, uh, then please um, don't be afraid like all the other people have already done to send me a message, an email, whatever you like, and I'll try and cover it as well as, well as I can. So yes, I think I'll stop the video making just for now, let you guys have these two videos, and I'll try and continue within the week or so. So uh, thanks for uh, encouraging me to, to continue to do this, and have a good evening.